Hey there, welcome back to Best Green Homestead. In today's video, I just want to do a quick video on how to adjust the relative humidity in your incubator or hatcher. So you can see behind us here, we've got a GQF incubator, turns the eggs automatically. This one is similar to the 1502, this is the 1202, the same as the 1502 with the hatching tray on the bottom, like this one right here you see we don't use it as we have dedicated hatchers but it has the ability to incubate uh, 288 eggs up top meanwhile hatching uh, up to about 70 on the bottom now the problem with these is the humidity varies so we like to incubate in one this was the one of the first ones we got and we like to hatch in dedicated hatchers because they require a different humidity now you're probably aware if you're watching this video what the humidity is supposed to be for both incubating and hatching and that's roughly depends on where you read what is recommended but usually 45 to 55 percent relative humidity for incubating whereas it's 75 percent plus ideal for hatching now we usually try to keep it about 50 percent is what we've found to be the best uh, and we have analyzed this through handling and observing the size of the air sac during the incubation period at different stages, as well as during day 18 when the chicken eggs are due to go on lockdown. So adjusting your humidity level in both your incubator and your hatcher is important to make sure that the eggs, that the chicks have room inside the eggs to poke into and they breathe inside that air hole. Um, and then they need enough room inside that air, air hole to be able to pip out of the egg and then zip around and open it up as they push and hatch. Now, if the humidity is too dry or too low during incubation, what will happen is the air sac will get too large and the room inside the egg isn't enough for the development of the chick. Now, if it's too moist or too high of a relative humidity, such as above 55%, what can happen then is there's not, um, there's not enough, sorry, you can see there the, uh, distracted me, the hatcher is turning right now, the incubator is turning the trays, uh, if you wanted to take a look at that, but, so they turn them back and forth every uh, three hours in a previous video. I think I said six times a day, so I think it's eight times a day. Um, but uh, that's all taken care of for you, so you don't have to worry about that. But so if it's too wet inside the egg, uh, inside your incubator, and then what? there's not enough room in that air sac, so when they break into it, they can't breathe, and they don't have enough oxygen to get by until they pip an air hole in the side of the egg, so then, then that can be a problem as well. So. Behind me you can hear some chicks. We've got a bunch hatching in three different trays here, multiple breeds down below. Now, so we're testing, you can see um, we've got a, a number of these incubators, they're GQF. This is another hatcher. These are the old school 1202 hatchers here and here. There's a box for a new one we got. Down here, this is an old school incubator with turning trays and another old school incubator with turning trays. And then this is one of our newest 1500 series, uh, dedicated 1500 professional dedicated ha uh, incubator. So we have our dedicated incubator and it turns at a larger angle, dedicated incubator. And then we will have these up and running, two mo three more dedicated incubators and two dedicated hatchers when we need for geese, ducks, and when the chickens start laying more. And um, oh, I could show you this quick. So you, with the digital series, it has the relative humidity written on the side uh, and it shows you that. Mind you, that can go wonky and it's good to have so the incubator temperature, humidity, 49%. So for now, this one seems to be accurate. I've tested it um, before and it seems to be the right relative humidity written on the side there. So in today's video, we're going over how to do the most reliable reading for relative humidity. And that is doing your wet bulb humidity reading. 
So what that does, and some people are confused, so I thought I'd do a video, but how this works, and I was a little confused at first when we first started to get into it, but you have, your temperature is up top on this chart. So you come across, you see 100 to 102, which makes sense because it only goes to 95 here. So you normally incubate chicken eggs at 100 or 99.5 to 100.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have our incubator and our hatcher at 100. Now our hatcher is usually slightly lower, but I, I go off the 100 degree Fahrenheit mark. So when we come along here, I've got the wicks inside. So I'm going to show you some chicks real quick. It's a little dusty from them in there but I'm gonna be taking those out quickly. But there's a wick that goes through, and I'll show you in the other incubator, it's easier to see, but you're taking your reading of your temperature and you take this temperature gauge, this is the GQF one, and you pull it to, like here's on the newer one, you pull it to the front here where it says hydrometer. So you read here, and if I open it up and show you, and I, have, I write the humidities as I'm adjusting things down so that I can adjust it properly. Got some eggs in here as well, but uh, just adjusting because during uh, we run the pellet stove, it gets drier in the winter, so we need to close things off to make it more humid. So we usually have just no wick pad in, and we have the humidity reading um, usually proper by just the tray filled with water and it's connected to our water reserve systems up top the buckets so that they don't run out as frequently so you put your I'll, I could take it off just to show you oh sorry so you put your thermometer through the side that just pokes through now you get your temperature reading first at the back we're at 100 so we poke it through and we put our wick onto the height onto the thermometer making it a hydrometer sorry i'm just going to slide it on here slide it on all the way and you put it in the water and you want to wait for a long time uh, ideally an hour or more to take a reading and then and before you take a reading and make adjustments so when i close it off you then take the reading on the side and you go back to your chart and you see what that says. See, now I closed it so the heat came out and so the hydrometer reading is going to be different. But for this example, I can show you off of this thermometer. Hydrometer it is now. So you're probably not going to be able to see, but that's at 92. So it's a lower reading when you're reading your hydrometer reading. So it's usually 100 Fahrenheit, but that's reading 92 being wet with the wick. So what does that mean here? We come back here. We're at 100, now we scroll down and find 92 on the side. So you see 92, go over 174. So that means that with our wet bulb reading of 92 and a temperature of 100 Fahrenheit, that comes to a relative humidity in the middle of the chart here of 74. So. We're at 74, ideally we want 75, like I mentioned. So that is pretty close to what we're looking for. Um, and that's about as far as I could tweak it for now. Um, with the pellet stove going, it's pretty dry. And I have the back vents, this is an old school one, but how you adjust it uh, with these old ones is you open and close these vents like this, and there's three holes at the back. So we have them mostly closed, but I want to leave it open enough that there is some airflow for the chicks to breathe. Now, with this one, you could see my readings were, uh, we had 83.5, which was 50%. I said, that's perfect. Then I read later at 82.5, sorry, 82.5, we're at 48%-ish. And then I wrote down whether I closed and open holes and I settled and this is hovering around the 50% mark, which is what I'm looking for for incubation. Now, some people do dry hatching. Some people do do it like this. Um, we have had the best luck not dry hatching. Every time we have our water run out, often when we're not paying attention before, especially we had these 
um, water reserve systems, we had poor hatches, especially in the incubating, or especially in the hatching. So I, I, when people say they dry hatch, I don't know if they mean they incubate dry or whether they hatch dry too, because I think that is a bad idea from the reason I explained. I'm just going off our personal experience and the results we've had. So we've tried ways and we have had up to 100% hatch rates um, and often over 95 when we have things dialed in properly for the humidity. Um, that's not including fertility rate after seven days because I believe that's, I, I consider that a different factor to do with our roosters and then, um, then that has nothing to do with the, the way you have your incubator or your hatcher set up. So, um, so this one's dialed in. So that's how you read them. That's how you do your wet bulb. Uh, for those of you wondering, now you can do the same thing. A lot of people just have these uh, tabletop ones. These are the Hoova baiters. These are also very reliable. We've had up to 100% hatch rates in them um, or very close to it. Now you can do the same or similar thing with them where you just take out. Um, I don't want to take out the other ones really, but uh, maybe I could take out this one. So you take out your thermometer try and focus in and when you have it on you put it in the top you put your wick on and then you have to put your wick into a container of water at the bottom that is going to wick up water to give you that wet ball breeding now um, these are meant for these incubators as well when uh, when you're hatching especially but uh, you can also we've done in the past where we just have digital and analog hydrometer humidity readings um, they're less reliable and i find with the high humidity anything electronic it tends to go wonky and they're reliable for about your first hatch so spend the money i would recommend and invest in something like this if you want to dial in your your humidity um, usually if you fill the recommended uh, tray numbers that they have in the bottom, it seems to be right, but we do find summer to winter, the humidity levels are way drier in the winter and way m more humidity in the summer, as you may know, especially in our climate. So that can vary. So whether you're using a tabletop incubator, a little plastic one, I don't recommend the Chinese ones. They tend to kill more eggs than they hatch. Um, that is how you read your wet bulb. Now, if you have any further questions about this, uh, feel free to comment in the comment section below. If you have any comments of how you do it or what you may recommend to people, you can let us know. Um, if you want to see more videos like this or if there's any specific videos you'd like us to do, you can comment and ask that as well. We will be doing more videos uh, like this, it, we had a pretty good view rate on our incubator review video for this uh, 1500 professional we did. Now, if you want to, we're going to do probably a review video to compare the old hatchers, the new hatchers. We could do a review video on the Hoover baiters and we could explain how we get our best hatch rates in them with or without turning rack, whatever scale of homesteading or backyard chicken keeping or any kind of bird that you do um, we we could do a video to try and help out with that now we want to do I feel like there would be good views uh, people would like to see as we like to do this because the chicks are so cute so I'm probably now gonna do a video just showing the chicks coming out of the incubator I think what would be a good video to do is a video showing the entire incubation and hatching on how to hatch chickens we could do one on how to hatch ducklings and how to hatch goslings because they are different um, now quail will be a little different all the temperatures vary the humidity rates vary and the time of incubation varies chickens are 21 days ducklings are 28.5 for the breed we have and geese have a hatch week so they could be 28 days up to i believe it's 35 days we haven't hatched recently but um yeah that's that's it for this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, please. And please subscribe. We are going to be more active on YouTube and we're going to have a lot of videos to come. Pastured poultry, regenerative agriculture, organic produce, and 
we have a small scale biodiverse orchard, we have a large strawberry garden and we're trying to grow as much of our own food as possible to feed our family because it tastes way better and it's nutrient dense and healthier for us. And if you want to follow along as we do this and maybe learn a few things along the way, we have done extensive research in every subject that we, that we are doing on our homestead. And um, there's lots of good podcasts out there as well that you can watch. Um, and you can learn a lot that way, as well as lots of other YouTubers that would be happy to show you how you can get started on some of this, as we've watched some YouTube videos and that there's some great people that helped us when we first started. So thank you for watching. This is Best Green Homestead. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at Best Green Homestead. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Best Green Homestead, and hit the bell to be notified when we might post some of these new videos we were talking about. Thank you. Happy homesteading from our family to yours.